Be sure to check out my latest videos. One of my latest videos is Movie Man Part 2. You also have Funko Fred. Scroll down and watch some of my older videos like Danny Moonstar Marvel Legend and also Walgreens exclusive Emma Frost. You girls and guys be safe out there and I will catch you later. Peace. Had to stop and refuel. Classic American cheeseburger with all the fixings on it. Mm -mm -mm. And some wings. Teriyaki and lemon pepper hot. Oh yeah. Let's do this. Hey, what's up comic book peeps? Welcome to another episode of Direct Edition, the channel is very hard, Direct Edition. And today we're going to be looking at some of the paperbacks from my collection. I really show you uh, a lot of my comic books and a lot of my action figures, but I don't really show you a lot of my hard covers and paperbacks. Uh, some of them you might remember, some of them you might not. But let's uh, do this. Let's do this. And this episode of Direct Edition is brought to you by... Everybody's favorite, my fake Darth Maul from China. <clears throat> Alright, very cool. You see Secret Wars, you know, backdrop. That was a pretty cool video. That was uh, Fred and Mikey Destroy Everything. That was my last video. But let's get into some paperbacks. Alright, so here's one of my favorite uh, paperbacks. This is called Deadpool the Merc with the Mouth. And some of the covers for this book is absolutely freaking, like, awesome. I've actually was able to pick up about three or four of them, but they, basically the the inside covers um, take from the old uh, horror movies. Like, uh, you had Jaws, you had, um, like, just so many uh, movie swipes. Uh, I don't think that in this book, yeah, he did a Nirvana cover too in this book. Which was pretty cool. The Nirvana cover to Nevermind, their uh, first album. So it's very cool, man. I definitely love this book. Uh, I prefer, if you're going to read any Deadpool, jump into Deadpool. Uh, this is definitely a jumping point. And uh, yeah, very awesome. So uh, while we're on Deadpool, this is a cool Deadpool cover. Um, I definitely love the Dead Presidents. I read this a while back and it was a pretty good read. And uh, yeah. Just awesome, where Deadpool actually uh, fights a lot of the former presidents. So some of the presidents I didn't even know the names of. So it was a very, very educational book as well as wacky and, you know, just Deadpool being Deadpool. Alright, so let's keep going. I usually don't show you duds, but this is a dud from Marvel. This is called The Heroic Age. It was very, like, boring. Um, I didn't like this period of Marvel. Maybe I can go back one day and uh, reread this again, but I just remember reading this like four or five years ago and I just thought it was just terribly boring and Marvel trying to do some stuff. Let's look inside of it. Let me remind myself of why I didn't like it. Because usually I like anything that they do. Okay, here's some cool inside art. Now I remember why I didn't like Heroic Age. I think this was around the time that uh, Marvel took Lama Six Fingers into a video. Marvel took every state and made a superhero group for that state. So this is basically everything thrown together. And um, this is a launching point for a failing group called Agents of Atlantis. So see that, like Avengers Academy. I didn't too much, I wasn't into Avengers Academy. And I don't think any of those characters really stuck around for good. It's just like kind of like, you know, Age of Heroes, it was a real wacky moment for Marvel, they just tried to, they kind of like when WWF went PG, you know what I'm saying, when you just came from the Attitude Era, you come from blood and guts, to hey, let's kiss babies and all that kind of stuff, that's what this reminded me of, but still, glad to have it in my collection, it's pretty thick, you know what I'm saying, and um, as soon as I saw it, I was like, why didn't I, did not like it, that looks like Arthur Adams, is that Arthur Adams, no, nah, that might not be. But yeah, pretty cool. And you also got some old schools in here. This is Marvel's first, like, 1960s. This was given to me by Comic Book Window. And that paperback is actually different because it's actually in black and white print. It's like the Marvel Essentials. So, very cool. If you're cool with it, if you know about the Essentials, then you definitely know what I'm talking about, the black and white. And uh, here's a cool cover that's uh, from Amazing Fantasy. 
Yeah, that's, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that Spider-Man number one or his first appearance wasn't like, oh, Spider-Man number one. It was like amazing fantasy. And they actually thought that Spider-Man was not going to uh, be big. There was like a teenage hero, you know, whatever. Like they didn't believe in Stan Lee's vision and they gave him like the last couple pages in Amazing, amazing Fantasy. And boy, were they wrong because uh, when the when the sales hit, the editor-in-chief at Marvel at the time, I don't know who, I forget his name, um, but he called Stan Lee back and he was like, hey man, you got some more of that uh, Spider-Man thing that you were doing? And so Spider-Man just became a huge hit in uh, Amazing Fantasy. And uh, yeah, one of our first teenage heroes besides uh, Shazam. So your indie corner is definitely going to be this uh, Darth Maul. And I recently bought every um, single comic out of this comic. Matter of fact, let me show you. Because it was just in another video uh, like a while back. But I was telling you that I, also, I had this uh, complete paperback. And uh, now I have the complete, the complete paperback. And also, I have the complete run from Dark Horse. So very cool. Always wanted to catch the individual comics. Never thought that I would find these individual comics because uh, if you're like me, you know, Darth Maul is very, very rare and you would never, never see uh, his stuff for cheap. But I actually picked these up for $1.25 a piece. So this is one thing that made me go eight nuts to giggle like a dolphin because I'm a huge Darth Maul fan. So yeah, this Darth Maul is definitely an indie corner. Well, let's keep going to paperbacks. Let's keep going. So this actual Darth Maul number one, uh, I actually couldn't find for a while, and I just recently found it. Uh, when I found the Darth Maul, I actually found the Darth Vader number one, which is actually this cover by Eddie Gradoff. But this is my Darth Vader paperback. If I can't find it in singles, usually I'll go to paperback or hardcover to find it. And I'm not such a huge fan of paperbacks because they get damaged pretty quickly. And once they get spine ticks, it's like uh, very standoffish more than uh, actual comic books do. Uh, but definitely glad to have this Darth Vader uh, Marvel in my collection too. I got a couple of his Dark Horse uh, hardcovers. Dark Horse is my source material for uh, uh, all of my uh, Star Wars books. Definitely love uh, Dark Horse's old take on the legacy of Star Wars. So very cool. Alright, let's keep going. So since we're going full off indie, I got a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 50. And uh, I definitely have this in my collection as far as my IDW collection. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to check and I'm definitely going to be raffling this off for uh, a contest winnings. I have two Ninja Turtle books that I want to give away for contest winnings. So uh, probably next video I'll come up with the contest and we'll go ahead and get those out. Um, well, one of them. The other one is already promised a big brother rig. We keep missing each other. He sent me his address one time. And uh, my emails after a certain time, they delete them. So I need your address one more time, big brother. Not your email address. Your address. So I can send uh, the other Ninja Turtle book out to you. But definitely we're going to have another contest. Okay? Alright, let's keep moving. So this is one of my favorite paperbacks of all time. This is actually one of my favorite artists of all time. This is Simeon Bianchi. Um, I always say his name wrong, or Bianchi. It's like a French or Italian name. I definitely love his artwork. It's definitely different than anybody else's. And I know it must take him forever to draw his drawings. But anyway, this is Thanos Rising. This is actually the backstory of Thanos. And if you want to, if you're a huge fan of Thanos, or if you want to know about him, that is definitely the book to get. Definitely, definitely. All right. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, what would this channel be, Brother Samuel Trejo, without some X-Men? This is the Ultimate X-Men. Uh, definitely was a uh, 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 interested in the Ultimate X-Men universe. I felt like they dropped the ball on a lot of things, but I felt like they were innovative on a lot of things. Uh, Basically, by introducing the Black Nick Fury, that was very innovative and making sure that his likeness was of Samuel Jackson. So when they did bring him to the regular Marvel Universe or Marvel Movie Universe that Samuel Jackson would play him, I thought that was very smart. But uh, this is Andy Kerber or Adam Kerber. 
I think that says, Ad, uh, let me see. <sighs> Love my six fingers. Okay, so that's Adam Kerbert. So I think that's like, one is a father and one is a son. So, but very cool Weapon X cover. Uh, definitely like what they did with the Ultimate Universe. I think they went a little crazy as far as like the incest between uh, the brothers and sisters. Uh, what was that, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. So yeah, very cool. All right, I'm going to show you one more. Then we're going to wrap this thing up. Okay, and the last book I'm going to show you is X-Men Extermination. This is uh, when Wolverine actually gets his revenge on the Age of Apocalypse Nightcrawler. Which is pretty cool, man, because uh, Age of Apocalypse Nightcrawler actually double-crossed um, Wolverine them. And this is when Nightcrawler had passed in the regular X-Men universe. And X-Force went back into the Age of Apocalypse to um, basically find a death seed to stop Archangel from becoming the next Apocalypse. So, very well written. Very well written. And it actually takes you back into your childhood if you was reading X-Men around the age of apocalypse. So definitely love this book. Definitely love these covers. And yeah. All right. I'll see you guys on the next video. Let's do the send off. And so once again, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Direct Edition. The channel is Fred Hall Direct Edition. We're definitely, um, definitely getting some work done down here in the dungeon. So that's why I'm able to show you some of my gems down here in the dungeon. And that book is definitely going to be up for auction on my contest. I'm going to announce my contest probably within the next video. So you guys just stay tuned for it. It's going to be an easy contest. You know, and it's going to take me no time to send your stuff off in the mail. You girls and guys be safe out there and I will catch you later. Right? Words of wisdom. Focus on the ones that show you love and on the ones that don't show you love. Hey, we're just going to keep our own world without them. The channel is Fred Hall Direct Edition. I will catch you girls and guys later. Be safe out there. Peace.